We're hoping to make fundamental discoveries about how forces across various lens scales, from the molecular scale to cellular to tissue scale, are generated in biological systems, and how do they also in turn generate signals to instruct cell and tissue functions. When we first started to establish this institute, we actually planning to establish a new interdisciplinary program that we hope to bring the best of various disciplines in science and engineering to the frontiers of looking at how the cell dynamics and cell movements as far as tissue morphogenesis. We're really interested in the extracellular matrix. So that's the part you know, surrounding the cells, the fibrillar meshwork that supports and guides cells and supports the tissues. And so we're really interested in the nanoscale. So very small scale interactions that, that cells make with their extracellular environment. So we're trying to develop new imaging methods so we can image tissues at that length scale. And then we can recapitulate those exact properties in the lab with materials and then study cell interactions. My lab particularly focuses on elucidating how the cells and tissue sense the external environment by focusing on how the signaling can be transduced and propagated through a group of scaffold proteins. And from there on, we are able to integrate how the different parts of the cellular cytoskeleton, as well as the signaling mechanism, were actually able to tell the cell what to do and how to do it. We are studying also the processes of cell migration, which is also basic process that is very important, for example, during individual development of organism. We know that cancer cells are moving differently and adhere to the substrate differently than normal cells. One of the new directions that we are embarking upon is uh, aging. So we really believe that mechanobiology research really holds the key, perhaps, for understanding aging and combat age-related diseases. We can see how uh, ways of trying to reverse aging, right? For example, if a cell uh, becomes aged, it becomes, uh, for example, for, for, for skin cells, it loses its elasticity. If we can find ways to make it more deformable again, you know, it, it can actually give, for example, tish, skin tissues much more elasticity as compared to the aged ones. Another direction we are going into is actually developing what we call organ-on-chip system. So what we're trying to do is to mimic part of the organ on a microfluidic chip. Because once we develop such a organ on chip, then we can use it for us to study both a healthy and disease organ on a chip rather than say in, in an animal like a rat or mice. Uh, one of the things that we, our lab has recently discovered, and I think a lot of people have been speculating, is that the role of uh, mechanical pressure, how that actually keeps the eggs in a well-defined shape. And we actually recently discovered that this sort of mechanical forces can actually impact the quality of the eggs within the follicles. And so I think by having this fundamental understanding, we will be able to to tune the environment around the eggs in order to actually promote the egg growth or inhibit egg growth. And I think that has tremendous impact. Age-related reproductive failure is a major problem for many developed societies, such as Singapore. We're coming up with a way to try to rejuvenate aged eggs through cell-based therapies. We also have several fantastic core facilities. These are facilities that house some of the most state-of-the-art technologies and to allow our researchers to fully utilize them without having to purchase or house high-end instruments in their own space. Imaging, especially be able to image live specimens, live cells, live tissues, is absolutely critical for our research because we really need to be able to quantitatively observe dynamical behaviors of cells and tissue. And another area of technology that we really heavily utilize is microfabrication because we want to be able to control the environment uh, our cell and tissue uh, grow and develop. And very recently, we established another core facility, which is called High Throughput Molecular Genetics. And here, we want to uh, take advantage of the most cutting edge uh, technologies in uh, genome editing. Mechanobiology is truly interdisciplinary area of science. 
because we really need expertise and knowledge from many different directions. At MBI, we have physicists, we have biomedical engineers, we have biologists, we have mathematicians, we have people with various technological expertise so that we can all put our talent and expertise together to solve these complex problems. And also we have a physical environment that promotes collaboration. So for example, we have this big open lab structure where all the different te research teams are in the same space. So our students and postdocs from different teams can interact with each other on a daily basis. We wanted to uh, make MBI a world leading center in fundamental research in mechanobiology. What we're hoping to achieve in the next several years, first is really continue to create fundamental knowledge, especially through interrogation of complex uh, systems, such as you know, multicellular tissues or diverse cell types. We think that mechanobiology is going to be a major player in our next level of understanding of biological systems and also how to be able to leverage our understanding for treating diseases and to solve other problems related to biological systems.